tendon of todaro oh my god anatomy 5 years back pada hum coronary sinus heart mein hota hai bolke yaad rakhna hi mushkil hai upar se examiner will ask tendon of todaro triangle of koch but these are all very standard questions let's talk about it what does it connect tendon of todaro so coronary sinus in the right atrium if you take the cross section of right atrium you can see the opening of the coronary artery coronary sinus and uh, i mean you you will be able to see the coronary sinus and tricuspid valve annulus it is the one which connects it so this is called triangle of koch you have a tendon of todaro what you are seeing here it is a collagenous band in the subendocardium and uh, it is a part of the fibrous skeleton of the heart and it will be originating from the central fibrous tendon the place where the av node is located and uh, it will be the one which will be passing inferior medially towards the inferior vena cava opening inferior vena cava valve what is that uh, uh, valve called eustachian valve so that is the story of tendon of todaro once more you can see that this is the crista terminalis and here you have the eustachian ridge here you have the inferior vena cava here you have the coronary sinus and typically your tendon of todaro is the one which is passing over here is what you have to appreciate then one more picture you have the eustachian valve which is at the opening of the inferior vena cava here you have the coronary sinus and this is the location where you are having the tendon of todaro so this is called the triangle of koch where one border is by the tricuspid valve another border is by the tendon of todaro and the coronary sinus typically forms the base of the triangle is what you have to ultimately remember so what is koch's triangle don't forget you have the tricuspid valve annulus then you have the tendon of todaro and then you are having the coronary sinus ostium that constitute the triangle of koch now come see interesting question <clears throat> danger space of neck where is it located it is typically located between the prevertebral and lr fascia pehla where is lr fascia where is prevertebral fascia wo samajhna padega so here you have the alar fascia and you have the posterior border is formed by the prevertebral layer and between the two and why this is important because all the way from the skull base of the skull up to the diaphragm it basically extends it has got a very loose areolar tissue inside it very little resistance for the infection that's the reason you need to basically worry so this danger space extends from the base of the skull to the diaphragm and it has got a very good connection with the posterior mediastinal structures and any inflammation over there can seep into the danger space and can extend towards the brain that's the reason you need to basically remember chiari network in the heart main pehli baar sun raha hu honestly just for the jipma today's discussion beech mein chiari network kya hai bolke i i i i never heard this term honestly uh i called one of my cardiologist friend and asked do you know what is chiari network i know ernol chiari malformation not chiari network he said then i thought oh not bad but you should be a interventional cardiologist to know what is chiari network typically the left valve of the eustachian valve which is guarding the inferior vena cava in few people it become fenestrated 
perforated. I mean, you know what is fenestration, right? So fenestrated eustachian valve. That is called cherry. And why cherry is important? Because that eustachian valve got all perforations, it will be hanging like a net. And if you are happy, if you are doing the 2D echo, you will get confused it for a vegetation. And wrongly thinking it is infective endocarditis, you may end up in treating it unnecessarily. So that is the reason you need to recognize this uh, cherry uh, network, which is a perforated eustachian tube, uh, eustachian valve. Eustachian valve is the one which is located at the opening of the IVC and uh, that perforated look is called cherry. So this is how typically that perforated eustachian valve, the cherry uh, looks like. And uh, the coronary sinus, uh, and this is very important. One more reason it is important. If you're an interventional cardiologist and you are passing the catheter, the catheter can get uh, stuck up in this uh, uh, cherry network and that can make the uh, passage of the catheter become challenging. So that is the story of cheery network is what you need to remember. So this is how you have the coronary sinus, the opening of coronary sinus and the valve. And this is the opening of the IVC and the valve of the IVC is called the eustachian valve and a fenestrated appearance of this eustachian is called the cheery network is what you have to basically remember. I still remember when I wrote in our days Jupmer exam that was long back 1999. Some of you might have not born also. So now the question is one of the one of the question in exam was Durix granuloma where is it found? Hare Bab. Naam bhi malum nahi hai humko. Half the questions, we didn't even know what is the examiner asking also. So that is the reason. Don't think everything is perfect. Those who crack exam are cracking because of some kind of a invisible wisdom. There is nothing like that. Panchabhut. Jipmer. Need PG. That is all India. AIMS, PGI, and uh, DNB. A punch question banks last 15 years. Agar aap uh, iron karke, mixi me dalke, baad me dry karke, iron karke, ready rahe to, nobody will stop you to win the exam. Only thing is, we dream to do that, but we don't do that. That is not right, right? My job is every day to be with you, to remind you and to inspire you to finish that essentials of these five question banks and then go to the exam. If you don't get seat, I'm not Murli Bharadwaj. Now, doctor, if you look at the interior part of the right atrium, this marked area called Fossa ovalis, from where does it develop from is the question of the examiner some of you are uh, <clears throat> uh, going to be the future interventional cardiologist so you must be very sure right it is developed from septum primum now before birth this is one simple illustration agar aapko samajh mein aage hai to you understood everything before birth there is a septum secundum and a shunt happening through the foramen ovale and there is a septum primum which is growing. After the birth, the septum primum will close the shunt and that part will become the fossa ovalis. So from there did fossa ovalis develop boleto? It developed from septum primum that is what you need to fundamentally understand so what is the purpose of foramen ovale in the embryonic life it will shunt the oxygenated blood from the 
uh, right atrium into the left atrium that is the whole purpose now uh, typically this septum primum after it has fused with the septum secundum what forms is basically called fossa ovalis now let's look how septum primum forms you have endocardial cushion defects and these are called atrioventricular valves and in the primitive atrial left atrium right atrium hai na in donon ke beech mein septum primum grows down and approaches towards the endocardial cushion so that is the septum primum which is a crescent shaped membrane that grows down from the roof and it forms the and it will be approaching towards the endocardial cushions is what you have to basically appreciate then if you look at the septum secundum it also grows from the roof but it will grow to the right of the septum primum that is the septum secundum so that is the story of primum and secundum i leave the literature for you once more to understand another favorite question of the examiner